Hello, hello. My name is Carrie Barrera and I am with ravensnestessentials.com. Be sure to visit our website to unlock a ton of different education to support you and your family on your wellness journey. We have everything in there from oils to yoga, meditation, all of these different areas that it really helps to have a little bit of support in and you can find it all on the website. So go check that out. Um, I'm really excited today because we are going to talk about animal health and wellness and supporting the overall general health of our pets and the animals that we love in our lives. We're going to focus mostly on household pets here. We do do a workshop on barnyard animals, but this one today is going to be all about those little guys who live on our couches, right? Okay, so let's get started. The things we're going to talk about mostly are going to be dogs, cats, and small animals. We're going to talk a little bit about intentional animal wellness, animal safety, because that's really the key component here, application and use techniques, as well as just cover some common issues and how you can support them at home. Oh, let me go back here because this is really important. Every single thing that I am sharing with you today is coming directly from um, these two main resources, as well as one more that will be listed at the end of this video. Um, Animal Desk Reference 2, um, version 2, is very important, and that is from Dr. Melissa Shelton. She is a veterinarian. And then the amazing Dr. Janet Rourke, who is also a veterinarian. She has a wonderful website. She has an amazingly active and informative Facebook group. Go check those out. But also check out her book. It is a wonderful book. Um, I will try to post the name of that and a link to purchase it in the description box below. Okay, so now let's get started. So intentional animal wellness is the same as our wellness, right? We're animals. We have the same needs. Um, we have to be eating right. You, you have to be feeding your animals an appropriate diet. I think we all know what that means. You know, let's not be feeding them off the table. Let's make sure they have a consistent diet. They don't eat the same things that we do with the processed foods and such. Check to be sure of the grain level that you have in your food, the protein levels. You really need to be um, doing a little research. Ask your veterinarian to recommend something, especially if you have an animal with either an underlying health condition or a, a, a proneness if you will, or, you know, a breed that is prone to certain health issues to be sure that you're giving them a food that is going to best support them. Exercise, right? All animals need some form of exercise for our dogs. This means getting out, running around the yard, going for walks for our cats. It means some fun playtime for our smaller animals, and especially those that live in cages or, you know, some how constrained um, houses of some sort, getting them out for a little bit of fun, right? A little bit of playtime, you know, uh, making toys with them, letting them be happy, letting them explore. Um, we have a little backpack for our ferret that she loves it. She loves to go places with us. She loves to look around and see everyone. It's got like a plastic, you know, so she can see out. Um, and she really loves that. She loves to come out and play. I mean, she's, she has free roam of the bedroom, but nonetheless, we like to get them out for that little bit of excitement, keeps their brain healthy. Um, rest and stress. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Obviously they need rest, but a reduced stress. I think we've all are familiar with animals that are suffering from basically anxiety. Um, toxins, most important thing we can talk about with our animals, because while we are living in an environment that is just bombarded with toxin levels. Those toxin levels are sort of, um, you know, moderated, if you will, they're not really, but you know what I mean? Um, based on what is safe for humans, not on what is safe for our dogs. So imagine living in a home and needing the toxin level to be such that you could lick your feet. Okay. Cause dogs need to lick their feet or cats. So if you're putting things that are like cleaners and things like that on your floors, your animals are drinking it. So you really have to be very careful in this area. We have helped a lot of families who have animal with health problems simply by getting rid of the toxic cleaners that they were using because the animals were just taking in so much of it on a daily basis and they don't really have a choice. Um, and then informed care, which is the kind of things we're talking about today, right? Things that we can do in addition to these basics. Okay, dilution and safety, huge. This is a general, take a little screenshot here if you can, a little general, I did it in drops because you know everyone is in different places and countries and such. So I thought drops made sense to everyone, right? So for a 0.5% dilution for 200 drops of that carrier oil, my favorite is fractionated coconut oil. Um, you're gonna add one drop of that essential oil. And then all the way up to 10% where you're gonna have 100 drops to 10 drops, right? So pay attention to that for different animals of different sizes, 
you're going to need to have a dilution. In addition to that, different animals, even of the same breed, they'll have different tolerances, right? One will like something, one will not. So you're really going to want to, initially, it is a little bit of working through it. But once you find the groove, you're good to go. This is the most important thing, though, and that is purity. If you are going to be using anything besides certified pure tested grade oils, okay, that have that CPTG label. In other words, right now, I think the only company that has it is doTERRA. Others are trying, so maybe they'll get there. But until then, you got to go with your doTERRA. Um, you're really going to harm your animal. I'm just going to tell you right now, even if you go to your favorite co-op store and it says 100% pure, if it is not labeled CPTG or that it is safe for ingestion, safe for topical use, you are going to be basically poisoning your animals. It only has to be 3% of that bottle has to have a pure oil in it in order for it to be labeled 100% pure. Look it up. It's part of the FDA. It's just how labeling works in the sort of like scent industry. So you have to be very careful. Any advice I'm giving here today is only for CPTG oils. I please beg you, do not um, go. I just, it's dangerous. Okay. It's just dangerous. And a lot of times, and it's good information. When you look up online, like, can I use X essential oil with my animal? You're going to see the answer is no. And you know what? They're right. They're right. Because you can't use just any brand of essential oil like that for your animal's safety. They are very sensitive. They have a different metabolism rate. They are smaller bodies. Their hair works different. Everything about how they absorb the world around them works differently. So you just need to know that what you're using is pure. The way that I remove all of that fear is by sticking with my CPTG oils. So make sure that that, I know, I'm sorry to sound like a scary lady, but for real guys, it's very, very important. Okay, oils to avoid. Um, now, can you use melaleuca around cats or dogs? There's a debate in the world. So while things are being debated, you know, opt out. Because guess what you can use instead that will do a lot of the same benefits. You can use geranium, arborvitae, myrrh, cedar wood. Do I use uh, melaleuca with my animals? I totally do. But only after having been really, really, really working with learning and using oils in my family and in our household for years and years. Um, so I, my general recommendation would be use one of the other ones, right? Why not? Wintergreen, we don't use with our animals. Instead, we opt for copaiba, frankincense, or aromatouch. And cassia, we also don't use around our animals. We do use it in the diffuser, and we also use wintergreen in the diffuser and melaleuca, but we are always sure that we, um, our animals have an option to leave the room or leave the house or leave the space. So be really careful with those and note that you have alternatives. On guard, oregano, and thyme are perfect alternatives for cassia. So diffusion, um, being sure that you have a medical grade water-based diffuser. Why do you need this? Because you don't want the oils to break down the plastics that are inside of a sort of cheaply made or not made for therapeutic use diffuser. You're going to want to be in a really good open space. You're going to want to always allow your animals the ability to opt out. Never lock like a dog in a bathroom with the diffuser going, okay? Or even a small room. You always need to let them have the option to opt out. Animals are very instinctual, as you can imagine. Their sense of smell is <laughs> extraordinary. And so they know, and they know, hey, I'm out of here. And observe their behavior. If they act like they don't like it, if, if you notice them always leaving the room as soon as you start that diffuser blend, or if you notice them in any way acting in a way that doesn't seem normal, stop use, okay? Um, really, really important. I will say here, I think something that works really well is intermittent um, diffusers. So have a diffuser that can go on for five minutes and off for five minutes, on for five, you know what I'm saying, one of those. Um, those work great for animals and being used around animals. Another application technique or way is, now this says diffusion in another way. So this is not with a diffuser. This is through, um, you, you know, obviously the medical grade water base that we already talked about, but then a fine mist spritzer bottle. Okay, so this is a way to spray sort of an area, um, their bedding area, or um, we actually used a fine mist spritzer bottle. Fine, so you're not gonna spray them like a punishment that people do with like cats and stuff. It's very fine, you almost don't even feel it. Um, with balance and a lot of water heavily diluted for one of our goats because she was very skittish and it really helped to chill her out and calm her. We also put it on um, a friend of her, a goat friend of hers, you know, in our house. Um, 
that she loved very much and trusted. So she associated that scent, you know, but it worked beautifully. And then passive diffusion is going to be something like, you know, on a cotton ball to keep them away from something. Or maybe um, another great one is with cats using a litter box technique where you're going to add a little to their litter box because then they will kick it up um, while they are using the litter box and they get that benefit that way. Petting. Um, very, very effective way to support your animal. So you don't ever really want to do like a drop of oil on like, you know, if your dog has like a hurt hip, you know, you don't want to just put a drop there. You want to dilute it pretty heavily according to the chart. Then you're going to kind of, I like to waft it off my hands a bit and then pet down their spine. If they're having a hip joint issue, pet, you know, rub and kind of give them a little massage there. Um, you can do general or localized in that way. I do avoid the paws because that at dogs, especially and cats, don't like for um, there to be a scent associated with where they walk. It makes them uncomfortable and it could cause them stress. One exception I can share is I have one dog that has seasonal allergies. Um, before we were able to start sort of dealing with that through um, you know, diffusion and other means, we, um, I would put a little copaiba and lavender heavily diluted on her paws because it itched, right? This is where she would itch um, from the um, allergies. And she loved it because first off, she loves copaiba. If the girl loves Copaiba um, and the lavender just gave her that support and stopped the itching. And so she was really, really happy about that. The Copaiba is also really great for any pain. So worked out well. Um, in addition, water and oil misting, kind of like I talked about earlier, great for pest control, spraying animal, you know, quarters where they're living, such like that. If you clean out your animal cages, a great cleaning. And then we use all natural cleaners that we make. We use the same cleaners in our animal beds and our animal um, cages here as we do in our household for us. So that makes life really easy for us. Um, really, really good. Um, emotional support, right? A stressed or anxious animal, skin issues like hot spots, feather care, and then of course on their bedding. Internal use, really important. Again, guys, that CPTG, right? Um, we're talking like maybe a drop in a whole big thing of water. We do Copaiba this way. We also do IQ Mega over their food, um, which I think I'll talk about in a little bit. And then licking. So a great way, like my dad's dog has been having some digestive health issues. Um, he will put some digestion. She doesn't like any, you know, uh, she doesn't really want him to like put the oils on her or in her food because she's very sensitive to smell. So the digestion has been really helpful to her, but the way he does it is he goes ahead, puts it on his hands, lets it waft off quite a bit because digestion can be strong, but then she just licks it like crazy off of his hands. She gets the benefits. It's diluted. She's happy, feeling better, easy peasy. Obviously, if she didn't want it, you're not going to force it on her. You're never going to like open a dog's mouth and force oils down their throat obvious, right? You're not going to put it in their eyes. You're not going to put it in their ears. Same as with humans. Um, you never force an oil onto an animal. Um, shampoos and ointments. So for our grooming, we make our own dog shampoo that we use our essential oils and it works amazing. It's great for fleas and ticks. It's great for itching. It's great for their coat. It is completely non-toxic. It does not dry out their skin. Correctex is the greatest thing that ever happened to an animal lover because it will help heal any wounds. I mean, I shouldn't say, I mean, if they get hit by a car, you know, be obvious, but you know, they get a scratch, they have something going on. The Correctex is wonderful because it's not dangerous for them to lick really, really helpful. And it helps it clean, clear up fast. Okay. Really fast for wound care. So for instance, we had a duck attacked heavily by a Drake duck that we had, um, like to the point where like there was, just, I just can't imagine how she lived through it. Right. Um, we made a spray with some watered down helichrysum spray, clean the area, sprayed her neck really well, and then put correct decks on the area. My husband made a little sock, um, I don't know, you know, bandage um, to put around her neck. She, that, that, I mean, you can see the bone. It was bad guys. Um, that healed, it closed over so fast. And she, honest to goodness, today, you can't tell which duck it happened to because she healed so beautifully from that. And I, I just can't believe it was amazing. So yeah, correct X, gotta have it, gotta have it. Okay, moving on here to 
some topics, right? So dog pain, this is a big one, you know, as our dogs age, I heard a thing recently, it was sad and funny. It was like, you know, having a dog is like 10 years of the best friendship of your life, two years of outrageous veterinary bills, and one day that's the worst day of your life that you never recover from, right? And it's terribly sad, but in a way it's so true. And as our dogs age, or maybe they have, you know, an issue that causes them to have pain, we're dealing with this, right? Um, we have some senior dogs in our household right now and, and wow, one um, doesn't seem to have any, the other one does have some pain and, and she wears out and her hips are getting on her, you know, things like that. So take note over here to the side that we have some great um, ways to tell whether or not your dog is in pain. They're not necessarily going to whimper or react the way that you expect when they're in pain, especially chronic pain. So take a note of some of these things. And if you see this happening, consider a few of these options for internal use that copaiba, a drop in the water or on your hands, or again, do the petting technique. By the way, you can use all of those techniques that I showed you earlier and that I broke down. Find the one that works best for your animal, okay? Or maybe you do the diffuser and a little petting technique, and then they get the IQ mega on their food. You know what I'm saying? So play around with it. But um, really great support for pain are gonna be the Copaiba, IQ Mega, Helichrysum and Myrrh. For topical, there's a three-part blend that is marjoram, lavender, and Copaiba. Note, all of this is diluted according to the charts, okay? Um, now, if you need a chart, reach out to me. You can reach me at Carrie Barrera, or actually the better one is gonna be ravensnestessentials at gmail.com. I will get that one so much faster. And I will send you a dilution chart that's based on like animal weight and such like that. So feel free to reach out to me if you are looking for that. Um, you can also make a salve or an ointment with copaiba, frankincense, and marjoram. This works beautifully, okay? Um, aromatic, diffusing that copaiba, lavender, and helichrysum. So then stress, right? Fireworks, we've all been there. New home, favorite son went off to college and now the dog is super sad. Someone's off in the military. There's so many reasons, separation anxiety, because, you know, look, a lot of dogs are going through this right now and cats because people have been home for a long time and now people are going away and they're left home alone for hours on end. And they're just like, what is this world, right? So there's a lot of stress happening with our dogs. Take a look at some of these um, behaviors that are going to trigger you to understand, hey, you know what, maybe this is stress. One of our dogs was um, really struggling with a lot of stress because she's aging, like I said, and she's losing her hearing. And so for her, that was really, really stressful. And so we've had to be really supportive of her emotional state um, and, and mindful of it. And we keep it in mind, we love her, right? We want her to be happy. Um, so be sure that you're looking at these things. Now, I'm going to tell you the same things that work for you and I for stress work for our animals. Okay. Um, I really love balance. Balance is my go-to and copaiba. Both of those two things are just, just power tools for stress and anxiety, you know, really trying to, um, support them through that process and paying good attention to their behaviors and such. So really great. Again, you can diffuse. I think that's the easiest and best way for emotional support. Um, and then the petting, they love the good petting. It's, it's something like I have a friend whose dog loves beautiful, the blend, right? And as soon as she opens it, the dog like shoom comes running and wants her to pet it onto her, you know, she just loves it. And it's now it's like a love language for her, which is great. And it, she finds it to be supportive. So really, really cool. Okay. Um, things that, you know, none of us want to talk about, right? Worms, you know, symptoms here, diarrhea, vomiting, you know, kind of looking, you know, they're, they're, they, they lose some of their luster, if you will. Um, really important to focus on, you know, that proper nutrition and supplementation. I really like Copaiba um, for supporting this, but digest scent in the water or in the food. Now, again, digest scent has a strong scent, so you might have to do the licking technique, but boy, it does a good job of ridding, um, getting rid of worms, something that we use even with our goats and our chickens. So topical support, there's something called a canine supportive blend. And this is out of the um, Animal Desk Reference 2. Notice it has a lot of oils in it, right? So use the parts that, you know, um, the ones that work for you in here, but oregano, thyme, basil, cypress, marjoram, lavender, copaiba, frankincense, melissa, helichrysum, and peppermint. <laughs> You're going to dilute this heavily though, guys. This is going to be a great overall health. So note, canine supportive blend, overall health and wellness blend to have on hand um, as a, just a regular maintenance, which is what we're all about, right? We like preventative health and wellness over here. So um, 
go ahead and make this blend. It is amazing. If you don't have marjoram, it's okay. You know, to use the other oils. If you don't have something, don't worry about it. Use whatever else you have. Um, just be sure it's at CPTG, guys. Okay. Um, things like diarrhea, right? Ugh, such a hard thing. <laughs> just had a call today from a friend whose dog had diarrhea in their bathtub. And she's like, how do I clean this? So yeah, it's a problem, right? And it's never fun when this happens to you. So again, that canine supportive blend, you know, if it's really kind of seeming like an ongoing thing, obviously, you know, you need to go to the vet, right? If, if, if your animal's sick for over, for more than three days and, you know, you're being checking hydration, all of these things, you know, we're all about going to the vet. So be sure and do that. But if you're trying to just support the recovery, you've got a plan in place. These are great tools. I love, again, really good, healthy food that is not filled with crap, not giving table scraps, not giving treats, making sure they didn't get a hold of something that they should not have. And when I say treats, I'm not talking about dog treats. I'm talking about like, you know, oh, here have some, I don't know, junk food, basically doggy junk food. Um, so supplementation here, I love the IQ Mega again. It's just for me, it's been the number one support for dogs. And um, I've seen it just do wonder, wonderful, wonderful things from pain to emotions to digestive health. It's just a key player. So Copa, you've been digesting again, monitor and track water intake. Um, okay arthritis. Oh, and they get old, you know, that joint pain, or maybe they've got the hip dysplasia issues going on. You just, it's just so sad to see them not feeling like they can jump and run and play again, guys, that IQ mega, I can't tell you enough. Don't wait until your dog is having these problems to start IQ. If you have a puppy start IQ mega. Okay. They are going to live a much happier, more vibrant, healthy life. If they have that wonderful, wonderful brain health nutrition in their diet, that supplementation just, oh, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. So start that as soon as you can get your hands on it. All right. Um, Copa even the water. I, my dogs like the IQ mega over their food. Try it. However works for you. I have another dog who'll just lick it right out of the spoon. So try that out. I really like a good massage with Copaiba or that three-part blend for pain that we were talking about earlier. Let me go back here to be sure that if this is one of the things that you're looking for here, marjoram, lavender, and Copaiba. All right. So um, go ahead and make something like that and give them a nice little rub down for that joint pain. Um, shampoo recipe. Here you go. 12 ounces of water, one tablespoon of Castile soap, two drops each of peppermint, eucalyptus, lavender, rosemary, and cedarwood. Now the eucalyptus, you really want to be, um, aware of, you know, you don't want them like eating. They're not going to eat and don't let them eat the bottle of shampoo. Okay. But, um, we use this on our dogs all the time. And it is just wonderful. If you're concerned about the eucalyptus, leave it out, you know, put something else in there that works. Um, a flea collar, the flea collar that we like to do is basically just taking their flea collar. We get it wet. Like we submerge it in water, get it wet. Cause we have cloth flea collars, or excuse me, I'm calling it a flea collar. It's their dog collar. Okay. We don't have a separate collar, their dog collar, get it wet in water. Then I'm going to add to the water. We add to it the Terra Shield and some cinnamon and almond oil. You could also just spray it down with that, but then you're going to take it outside and let it dry. All right. You're not going to put it on them wet. It can be a little bit too overwhelming. So, and then put it on them. Now, Terra Shield, my dogs love Terra Shield. Terra Shield is safe to use with your animals before we go hiking or walking, or we're, if we're camping and we're someplace really wooded area, we will do a good spray down of our hands and pet them down really, really well with the Terra Shield to prevent that from happening, from them getting, you know, bugs and, and bites and such like that. So let's talk about our kitty cat friends, right? Um, you know, we want to pay attention to signs that our cats are having some health issues, head position, you know, if they seem odd or weird, how they are, um, laying, you'll notice that there's a difference in their behavior when they're not feeling well, any type of discharge is certainly something to be concerned about drooling, diarrhea, the obvious things, right guys, behavioral differences that are just not seeming right. Destructive, you know, I mean, playful is one thing, but you know, there's a difference, right? If once you know your cat, you know, um, they are very much about the signs, right? <laughs> they, they will leave little signs for you. So here we have a little bit of information on anxiety and what to look for if your cat is suffering from an anxiety issue. There are things that are very triggering for them, you know, 
dogs seem like you hear about dog anxiety more, but cats have tremendous anxiety too. It's just that we kind of tend to not listen to their behaviors and chalk it up as like, oh, those silly finicky cats or those silly, you know, she's such a blah, blah, you know what I mean? Um, but really pay attention. You know your cat, you'll know a difference. Um, or if you notice that all of these things are something, you know, the excessive grooming, you know, aggression, um, trembling, um, needing to be with you at all times, changing, need, anything like this, then, you know, go ahead and give them some support, right? We have a feline supportive blend. It contains oregano, thyme, basil, cypress, marjoram, lavender, cobaiba, helichrysum, and balance. And so these are what you're going to put together. You're going to dilute heavily. Again, reach out to me, Ravens Nest Essentials at gmail.com and I will get you that dilution chart. I can take a picture of it directly from the book for you if you need. Um, and then go ahead and do some petting. Um, allow your cat to allow the cat to choose the oil that they like. Now, when I say choose, I don't mean put it on your hand and put it in their nose. They're not going to like anything that way. Just don't even open the bottle. All right. Because they are so sensitive. When you used it the last time, you got some oil on the outside of the bottle. Just kind of let them see each of them, copaiba, vetiver, lavender, and balance. Let them pick the one that they're into, put some on your hands, dilute it heavily, waft it off for that initial sort of off-gassing that has to happen, then do a nice petting, really loving and gentle support. And then aromatic in your diffuser, you know, let them choose or choose, you know, any of these would work. Give them the option to leave you know, really, really important. Also spraying down their bedding area can be very, very helpful. I really think that that's, um, I just like it too, because it keeps it fresh, but nonetheless. Aggression, again, with that feline supportive blend, um, letting them choose. So you can see, right, there's, there's a pattern here. Let them choose something that works for them and pay very good attention to these changes in their behavior. So here are, I love this list. This is a great one to take a screenshot of for allergies. We've got Melissa Clove Copaiba, arthritis, again, Copaiba, frankincense, myrrh. So with this list here, what you're going to notice is, you know, there's a whole list of oils. Of course, they do need to be diluted, but you can use those techniques that we talked about earlier. You can use them aromatically. You can use them topically through petting. Um, if they're into licking, let them lick, you know, whatever. Um, cats don't tend to really like internal um, like it, they don't want it in their water from what I found. Let me tell you, I do know cats that do, but it's kind of like the cat who likes to take a bath, right? It doesn't happen very often. Um, so we really tend to lean toward aromatic and topical use with our cat friends. And then our little, our little guys. So we have some little guys here. We have a turtle. Um, we recently lost a rabbit that we're still recovering from that loss. And we have a ferret. Um, all kind of like very different animals for any type of support or health issues, right? Um, but you can actually use your oils and use these, you know, again, you're using that wellness pyramid. Are they, you know, eating the right healthy food? You know, don't get junk food, Be, do your research. We found out that actually at the place where we got our ferret, they recommended a food that is actually the worst thing you could get for your ferret. And apparently it's really what a lot of places recommend but my daughter, who's a really diligent animal person, she works in, um, she's done work with like wildlife rescue and things of that nature. She did a lot of research and found out, no, don't feed this. It's really bad. It's filled with fillers and it can, it causes them health issues later in life. So we switched off that food. She's doing fantastic. She's five years old. She's a girl. If you have ferrets and she's a girl, you understand why that's amazing and awesome. But um, yeah, you know, you need that pyramid. She gets exercise she's happy. She has a lot of interaction. You know, we try to provide a happy home life, you know, even though sometimes she does go in her, she has like a big cage that she goes in. Like if we're not home, we don't let her just stay out for fear that, you know, she'll get lost or hurt. Um, and, but she gets that outside time. So it always makes me sad when animals who live in cages are always them, the mental health support that they need always in that small living space. They want to interact with you and love with you. Our turtle's a little different. He bites. <laughs> he was a rescue. Um, but he still goes out and does his sunshine time, walks around the yard. You know, we let him go find stuff to eat. He has a good time. And then, you know, we bring him back in and so on. So, you know, always trying to think of that enrichment that helps them. So, so here's our small animal supportive blend. So this is going to be your go-to, right? Copaiba, frankincense, lavender, lemongrass, helichrysum, tangerine, 
ginger, basil, and marjoram. So with our little guys, this is a one to 3% dilution, but with little tiny guys, I go down to like that 0.5 where you're talking 200 drops of carrier oil, you know, to one drop of the essential oil. Again, CPTG guys, oh my gosh, it scares me the idea that somebody's going to watch this and go buy something at like, I don't know, a, box, a big box store or even a co-op, you know, a nice health food store and use it with their animals. Please, please just be aware that everything here has to be CPTG, right? So then here we have some of our resources from today. This is by no means, you know, I mean, this is a very abridged version of this class and this workshop that we like to do, but we have the ADR2 animal desk reference from Dr. Melissa, Melissa Shelton. We have the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association. They have a wonderful website that you can find great information on. Definitely check that out. And then I love um, the Tesserand and Young, the essential oil safety second edition. And then lastly is going to be, and I don't know why I don't have it on here, but Dr. Janet Rourke, um, who is also a veterinarian who now has a book out. But prior to that, um, I've certainly utilized in the making of this slideshow, her Facebook group and her website. So um, be sure to check those things out. I hope this was helpful. Definitely go to our website, ravensnestessentials.com to find other amazing workshops. Check out our channel. Please subscribe if you're interested in learning more. Um, it helps us out a lot. Like, comment, reach out to me if you need those dilution guides and we will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day.